What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony, let's jump in. Okay, happy Saturday everybody and a very happy new year. As the rest of the country and the world celebrated the beginning of 2022, Xi'an and its 13 million residents entered their 10th day of their strict lockdown. The situation there still has not improved despite millions uh, unable to even step outside their apartments except for testing and now with over five rounds of mass testing completed, hundreds of new cases are still being discovered every day. Indeed, state media continues to call the outbreak in Xi'an the worst since the Wuhan outbreak and lockdown in early 2020. On Saturday today, the National Health Commission reported that 175 new community infections with confirmed symptoms were discovered yesterday, bringing the total for last week up to over 1,150, an unacceptable level for a country pursuing a strict zero cases policy. There is still no indication that this policy will be relaxed anytime soon, however, despite expensive disruptions. Elite opinion is still firmly in favor of a zero cases policy, especially in the lead up to the Winter Olympics in Beijing next year, or this year rather, as well as uh, the once every five years Communist Party Congress, where leader Xi Jinping is likely to officially secure a third term as party secretary. Yesterday, Friday, a Xi'an government official said curbs would be loosened in less risky compounds when the time was right, but didn't indicate when this might be. Earlier in the week, we discussed the serious food shortage that residents in the city were facing. After a national outcry, it appears that greater efforts are being made to ensure basic food demands are being met, but we should continue to keep a close eye on the situation, especially since new cases continue to grow in number every day. Next up, in a paper published in the Chinese journal Air and Space Defense in December, Chinese scientists say they have developed next generation hypersonic weapons with technical breakthroughs and in infrared homing technology. The specific claim, according to the lead researcher, is that China has made, quote, a series of core technological breakthroughs with heat sensing and hypersonic speed that were proven effective in tests, end quote. If this is the case, that China has developed heat sensing at hypersonic speed, then it would represent a breakthrough two to three years ahead of the US military, which has claimed that they will not have the technology until 2025. In the paper, the Chinese researchers claim that with heat-seeking capabilities, Chinese hypersonic missiles will have the ability to home in on most targets at incredible speeds including stealth aircraft and moving cars on the street. The lead researcher of the paper argues that this could be a game changer. Quote, with effective hypersonic precision strike weapons, the critical value of strategic depth in traditional warfare will no longer exist. All the critical political, economic, and military assets of a country will be at risk." End quote. Now on this theme, let's touch on some key developments in Chinese technology. Quickly, if you're enjoying the episode, don't forget to hit the like button. It's the only way this video can be shown to new people. And if you're watching this for the first time, you're getting some value from the episode, maybe consider subscribing, hit that bell notification, and you'll have the most up-to-date analysis when I release these every day. Okay, let's move on. Yesterday, Friday, on the last day of the year, led by Alibaba Group Holdings, who saw a 8.2% jump in stock prices. Hong Kong technology stocks surged by the most they've seen in three weeks. The first piece of good luck investors in the sector have seen for some time. By the end of the day, the Hang Seng Tech Index in Hong Kong appreciated almost 4%. Analysts believe that the jump was caused primarily by a government report which showed that Chinese manufacturing expanded this month, beating expectations. Along with Alibaba Group Holdings, Chinese companies NetEase, JD.com, Meituan, and Tencent Holdings also saw price jumps. Despite all of this, however, the month of December was not particularly kind to investors. After Friday's surge, the Hansung Index was still down in December by 0.2%, and of course 2021 generally was not very kind to investors at all. Alibaba stock, for example, lost 49% of its value in 2021. Douyin, also known as TikTok competitor, Chinese short video platform Kuaishou, 
has signed an agreement with on-demand services and food delivery technology giant Meituan. According to a statement released this week, under the deal, Meituan will launch a mini program on the Kuaishou, literally fast hands platform, where merchants can directly sell products and services to Kuaishou users. Chinese technology analysts say the partnership could be a big deal, but a lot depends on the regulatory environment over the next few years. Meituan is one of several Chinese technology companies that has been sucked into the government's crackdown on the industry over the last year or so. Chinese financial media outlet Caixin Media reports that Chinese electronics giant Xiaomi Corp unveiled its latest flagship smartphone series. Quote, the launch Tuesday night was touted by Xiaomi CEO Lei Jun as a renewed effort by the company to challenge the new iPhone 13 series that its biggest rival unveiled in September. It comes at a time when Huawei Technologies Co Limited is nowhere to be seen among the top smartphone vendors due to core component shortages caused by US sanctions in force since 2019. End quote. On Thursday, speaking to state media, People's Republic of China Foreign Minister Wang Yi outlined his country's diplomatic agenda for 2022, taking the opportunity too to be critical of Europeans and the United States. Quote, there seems to be some kind of cognitive split in Europe's China policy. It is hard to imagine that, on the one hand, it has established a comprehensive strategic partnership with China, and on the other hand, it has positioned China as an institutional opponent. Putting barriers to the China-EU investment agreement is the same as putting barriers to the development of Europe, and the long-term interest of European people will suffer. End quote. China has seen diplomatic relations with many powerful nations and blocs suffer over the last few years. The country's assertive new diplomatic style, referred to by some as Wolf Warrior Diplomacy, likely has not helped the situation, though it has proved to be very popular domestically. Though China's relationship with the EU is healthier than its relations with the United States, actions in Hong Kong, tit-for-tat sanctions, and the recent treatment of Lithuania has strained European goodwill towards the Middle Kingdom. Wang Yi once again took the position that the strain has been simply caused by ideological bias and pressure from the United States, rather than real indigenous concern among Europeans towards Chinese actions in recent years, expressing that, quote, Europe should form an objective and independent view towards China, end quote. Wang Yi also spoke about the US and blamed it for the, quote, extremely dangerous situation, end quote, with Taiwan. Quote, the US is making new provocations in issues related to China's sovereignty and security causing damage to bilateral ties." End quote. Wang Yi also spoke about the geopolitical dynamics of East and Southeast Asia, but again, just like with Europe, blamed issues exclusively on external actors without recognizing possible local indigenous concerns. Quote, we must not allow any extraterritorial country to push Asia into a new Cold War. No country outside the region should be allowed to provoke an arms race or even the proliferation of nuclear weapons in this region, threatening the security and stability of Asia." End quote. And last up, Evergrande Group. According to Bloomberg News, China Evergrande Group dialed back payment plans on billions of dollars of overdue wealth management products as its liquidity crisis showed little sign of easing. Quote, Evergrande will now pay each investor 8,000 yuan approximately 1,255 US dollars a month towards their principal between December and February 2022, end quote. According to the statement, Evergrande's wealth fund is having difficulty raising the funds from its investment projects. More than 70,000 people have brought Evergrande's wealth products, and the company has missed over 40 billion RMB of payments to retail investors, already labeled a defaulter by two international ratings agencies after missing coupon payments on two bonds last month, and also missing bond payments due this week, Evergrande faces billions of dollars in obligations this year in 2022, putting more pressure on the government to do something or risk further crisis in the Chinese financial system. This is what Michael Pettis, professor of finance at Peking University, recently observed on this point. Quote, Everyone made the same bet on rising property prices, especially the developers, who leveraged to the hilt overpaid for land at auctions, and scooped up as much real estate risk as they could take on. The problem, of course, is if property prices ever stop rising, because everyone has made the same bet, everyone's balance sheets start unraveling at the same time, and it immediately becomes a systemic problem. 
That is what has happened in China. End quote. Hey guys, I'd love to hear what you thought about some of the updates we covered in today's episode. So throw your comments below. Always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.